So this is the MacBook Air 2017, my primary sole device that I use for editing my YouTube videos and basically pretty much everything else. I've been running the last few beta builds of Big Sur but rolled over to this uh, stable update and I'm gonna share my user experience. By the way guys, the new MacBooks with the M1 chip are really tempting but I'm probably going to hold on to this one for at least another year. The simple rule is always skip the first gen unless you are a tech enthusiast. But what you shouldn't skip is a great software like Clean My Mac X which is the sponsor of this video. Clean My Mac X is one-stop solution for all the maintenance of your Mac so you can actually focus on your productivity more. You have all the essential tools built right into this application and the app is designed so beautifully and keeping user friendliness in mind. I love this space lens uh, feature which visually shows what's eating up the storage without having to go through the boring file systems. With just one click you can clear up all the junk, the cache, basically unclutter your Mac in just a few seconds. You do have built-in malware tool along with other really handy tools that can be of great help. I'll drop a link in the description, do check it out. Alright now let's jump right into the video. So when I tested the boot times it was taking about 45 seconds which I believe is a little bit slower than usual. Also when I opened the lid after a long while being idle I did notice a very delayed wake up times but other times usually it works just fine. Now looking at the software I just love the control center thing, the whole iPhone OS wipes. I personally love this visual appeal and it looks really eye candy. On top of that the wallpapers just look amazing. This is probably the best Mac version in terms of wallpaper collection but at the same time the functionality has also improved. Like always it's pretty simple and superb. Particularly the control center is a great addition. All the essentials are in one place, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop and you can actually adjust the keyboard brightness which is really handy and the good thing is you can also customize this a little to your liking as well. Great stuff. Now I'm not much into widgets but you do have the widgets and you can customize with different sizes just like the iPhone OS but the real fun starts when more third party widgets become available. Now let's talk about the performance and day to day user experience but before that let's look at the benchmarks. The reason I ran the Nova Bench is because last time around with Mojave also I ran this tool so it helps us in comparing and you can definitely see a bit of improvement in the overall score. Now I never bought anything just by looking at the benchmark scores so let's talk about the real experience. So just to give you an idea I have loaded a few apps, a YouTube video playing in Full HD and about 8 apps loaded in Safari, some of which are pretty heavy with images, text and stuff. Generally the Safari is but a smooth in scrolling and stuff. I also have the final cut loaded with a project that's 1080p 60fps footage with a few transitions and titles added. I also have the Chrome loaded with a couple of tabs. So when I try to switch between apps and the multitasking it doesn't feel that smooth. You do see dropped frames in the animations. The Chrome is generally not very smooth in scrolling but here it feels terrible with scrolling and stuff. So it's barely able to keep up with this kind of stuff. In my experience the performance seems a little degraded and even the thermal management could be better because um, I did notice that the fan kicks in early compared to the previous version of macOS. But let me tell you that in the previous beta builds, even switching from one desktop to another caused reloading of icons as you can see here. And the Safari wouldn't play videos for some reason and uh, there were some Wi-Fi issues and uh, the thermal management was like terrible. I had to disable the background rendering on the final cut. So these were issues but they were ironed out to some extent and I'm pretty hopeful that these things should get better with the future updates. In terms of battery life though, I haven't seen any major changes or any unusual battery drain. It's been doing pretty good I would say. So should you upgrade? I know the visual changes are so appealing and tempting that it's really hard to resist but I feel the performance could be a little bit better with better thermal controls but unless you push it too hard it shouldn't be an issue for most casual users. So that wraps up the video guys. If you found it helpful, please like this video. Also subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.